This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39mm and it's most likely the best priced Rolex out there but also the perfect first watch for those who want to start buying actual luxury watches and in this video I'm telling you exactly why. So let's get started. I have been getting a lot of messages and questions recently regarding beginner watches or recommendations for what to buy when first starting out with what most would consider actual luxury watches. And most of the times those messages or questions are all about Rolex watches or more specifically the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39 mm So that's why today I'm going to give you four reasons as to why the Oyster Perpetual is not only the perfect first Rolex, but overall an ideal first luxury watch purchase. And another reason why this watch still may not be something for you. I'm going to answer all the questions you might have before buying it. We're going to look at what the Oyster Perpetual can or can do and I'm also going to talk about prices, availability and value retention. If you'd like to see more reviews like that feel free to subscribe to my channel or leave a comment down below and tell me what watch you want to see next on this channel. Those who buy a Rolex do it mostly for two reasons. On the one hand, a Rolex is the embodiment of reaching a personal milestone or goal, and it's also a nice statement piece on your wrist. But on the other hand, Rolex is obviously known for something else, the unbelievably high quality of its watches, of course. Rightfully, you might ask yourself which trade-offs Rolex has made when you consider buying the Oyster Perpetual 39, as this one is only $5,700, and therefore the lowest priced Rolex model currently produced. For your information, there are indeed some trade-offs that I'm going to cover, but first I want to start off with showing you where there are definitely none. The quality of this watch. With the Oyster Perpetual, you get the exact same quality as with any other Rolex watch, therefore making it simultaneously one of the highest quality watches out there. The case and the bracelet are both flawlessly finished. The sides of the case as well as the bezel are polished and it's complemented by the smooth brushing of the bracelet and the clasp. When holding this one, you can instantly tell that this is definitely a high-end piece. But it gets even better in the details. The color of this dial on this watch in the video is called Rodeo which is a deep rich gray with contrasting blue squares on the edge to highlight the hour markers. With the immaculate sunburst finishing on the dial, you get some amazing color gradients which result in all kinds of beautiful shades of gray. The stick hour markers are made from 18 karat white gold and are still being placed on the dial by hand. Also made from white gold are the seconds, minutes and hour hand that sweep across the dial. For better legibility in low light situations, Rolex has added Superluminova onto the minute and hour hand as well well as on the hour markers at 3, 6 and 9 o'clock. That's I think why Rolex is so great. Where other manufacturers make trade-offs or compromise on their quality, Rolex is still giving you the exact same high standard as with any other model no matter the price segment. But there has to be some sort of distinction between more expensive pieces and this one and you can find it exactly in two places. First, the Oyster Perpetual has an hour, minutes and seconds hand. Nothing more and nothing less. There is no date display or anything else whatsoever. And secondly, there is no quick adjustment on the clasp. Almost any other model has some kind of quick adjustment to adjust the length of the bracelet to a certain degree, even just for a few millimeters, like for example, the very similar looking and circa $1,000 more expensive Explorer. But there is no such thing on the Oyster Perpetual. To adjust the size, you have to use a tool. With each Rolex, you not only get a very high standard of quality, but also something equally as important. A watch that is perfectly suitable for everyday wear. There are three reasons and a little added bonus the Oyster Perpetual brings to the table that some other Rolex models might not have. Reason number one is the comfort. Rolex is known for improving their watches incrementally, perfecting them step by step, so to say. And they definitely succeeded here in terms of wearing comfort. Not many other watches wear so comfortably on your wrist like a Rolex and so does the Oyster Perpetual with its three links Oyster bracelet. And reason number two is the robustness and I mean that in every sense of the word. It starts with a water resistance of 100 meter, which is the standard with every Rolex by the way, except for the Cellini which has 50 meters, which means that swimming is no problem at all. In spite of its luxury watch status, the Oyster Perpetual is still a perfect daily beater. The built-in in-house caliber 30 32 is a real workhorse of a movement and 
with its maximum of two seconds per day, not only super accurate, but can also absorb hits or knocks without having a problem. Which means that if you are into wearing your watch 24 seven to work, to go on holidays or while sleeping, you can definitely do so with your Oyster Perpetual. Reason number three is the understatement of the Oyster Perpetual. Most people would probably identify the Submariner with its distinctive look or the Datejust with its fluted bezel as a Rolex. But with the OP, it's a little different. You could definitely tell that this must have been a rather expensive watch, but the more contained design with the dome bezel is not immediately a dead giveaway for a typical Rolex. And then there's also the added bonus that the Oyster Perpetual is available in different sizes as well. Starting from 26 millimeters up to 39 millimeters with all kinds of dial variations, which means you can pick and choose the exact color, dial and size combination that suits you best. First, let me say that with a price tag of $5,700, the Oyster Perpetual is by no means a watch to actually start out with. It's a lot of money, especially for something that is definitely not essential for survival. But oftentimes with Rolex, it's not only the price that's the issue, but also the availability. But here's where the Oyster Perpetual is kind of an exception to that. You could say that there are three types of Rolex watches when it comes to availability. Number one are those models which sit in the window display that you will see whenever you walk past any AD basically. They are ready to buy and mostly very expensive full gold models or just some random bedazzled ladies watches in different sizes. Opposed to those watches are the watches in category number two. It's the Daytonas, the Pepsis, the Hulks, etc. So in other words, basically unavailable models, especially when you are a new customer at that AD. But there is a third category, a third type of watches from Rolex, of which probably not many might know of, and that is including the Oyster Perpetual. Those watches might not be sitting in the window display, but most of the time, ADs have those watches in stock at the back or available every now and then. Especially with watches in this category, chances are good that you get one of those even if you might be a new customer or this is your first watch ever without having to wait forever, considering that you're actually serious about the purchase and let your AD also know that you are. But in case if you get impatient, you could also check online as they're currently selling for a bit over their RRP on Corona 24. But depending on your negotiation skills, there's also a good chance that you get a good deal online too. So when my partner bought his first actual luxury watch, I remember how we talked about value retention because that was the first watch he bought and he was concerned about whether or not his saved money would be burned when buying the watch. I am sure many do think about that as well. I mean, the whole idea of value retention is kind of a nice justification for buying something like that and to fulfill your wish, but that's exactly where you have to stay realistic and not lie to yourself by bending the truth a little. Generally, the Oyster Perpetual has not only held its value in the past, it has even increased it. And I would assume that it will at least hold its value pretty steadily in the future because it is a watch in the lower luxury price segment with a high demand. But your actual price when selling it first and foremost depends on how quickly or not you need or want to sell it. What I mean by that is that when you bought this watch with money that you did not really have and then something happens where you need the exact money, you probably would need the money as soon as possible. So now with the financial and the time pressure, it's very likely that you only get 70% or maybe even less than what you paid back, depending on how fast you need to sell it. But in case you, after some time, just kind of fall out of love with your watch or you plan on changing up your collection, you would then be able to sell it with no time pressure at all and probably get the money back you spend on it. And of course, sometimes you even get lucky and get even a bit more than that but please do not count on making any profits or something like that, because that's just speculation and asking for trouble. I mean, I would be the best example of that because I also did buy things and also watch ones that I couldn't really afford. And I remember how I constantly kept on thinking about selling the watch every time I hit a financial bump in the road. Luckily, I never actually had to sell the watch for that reason, but I can tell you with 100% certainty that this is not the way you wanna own such a watch. Trust me. But if you spend within your defined budget, then Rolex watches and their value retention are definitely a solid plus on the pro and contra chart when buying a watch for your collection. Considering, of course, that you like all the other things about the watch too. 
because you can update or change your collection without losing too much money when selling a watch. Okay, so now that we have covered four reasons that speak for the Oyster Perpetual 39, there is one thing you should still be aware of before buying it. This watch should not be your choice if you want a Rolex for the sake of having a Rolex. If you actually want to get, let's say, a sub, because that one's the most popular, I would say, but can't get your hands on one because it's either unavailable or it's expensive on the gray market, the Oyster Perpetual is definitely the worst substitute you could buy. Before you buy it, you should really think about what you want from your watch. If you want a watch that is, in terms of Rolex, rather plain and understated, but with the same amazing quality and finishing that is right up there with the high-end stuff, then the Oyster Perpetual is the right thing for you. But if you're just after the typical Rolex look, which is okay, by the way, and if you want your watch to stand out or get noticed by other people, well, in that case, and let's be real, a Rolex is definitely a status symbol if you like it or not. Deep down, you probably want a different watch and therefore the Oyster Perpetual is not going to make you happy. By the end of the day, you should know and be sure of what you expect from your watch because that way you just can never go wrong. So now you know why the Oyster Perpetual is the perfect luxury watch for beginners, what you have to be aware of before buying it and in what case you should keep your hands off of it. But if there are still some questions left, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.